remember our wild patch from just a few weeks ago? Look how much it's grown and we're so proud of it. It gives us plenty of privacy from all the neighbors and it's full of life. We were just photographing a monarch butterfly hopping from one milkweed plant to another. Welcome back to Bromberg News. Originally, we were planning on talking about something else on backyard feeding, but as we were filming the episode, we noticed goldfinches collecting nesting material. And then I just remembered, of course, it's already July, and normally when thistle plants start producing this fluff right here, is when goldfinches start breeding. So we have plenty of thistle plants in our wild patches, so I don't actually have to worry about my goldfinches, but if you don't have anything like this, there are other things that you can put out for them. Dog fur is very popular. We used to put a lot of dog fur out. Unfortunately, we've just lost our dog. He was our biggest contributor to nesting materials. But if you don't have any dogs, you can also use other materials. Make sure that they are not treated or not uh, dyed with any kind of chemicals. I buy this organic natural cotton wool and that's what I'm planning on putting out just to help them out, just in case. So this is what I'll do. Just leave it on this uh, thistle plant right here. You can also use yarn, just make sure it's not treated and it's not dyed. Every summer we try to spend as much time as possible in our backyard. And I was just talking to my husband how we used to use a lot of bug spray before we were feeding birds, but not anymore. With all the bird feeders, bird houses, bird baths and native plants, we don't really have to worry about insect control. Birds take care of that. Did you know that every year birds eat up to 550 million tons of insects? So continue to make your backyard bird friendly so you'll never have to use any bug spray or pesticides. John Patrus from Pennsylvania wants to know if birds change their feeding habits when the exterior temperatures fluctuate. He noticed when they were going through a heat wave, birds stopped visiting his bird feeders. When the temperatures returned to normal, so did the birds. Hi, John. Great to hear from you again. You always ask such interesting questions. This one's a relatively easy one. You said you've been using the same feed mixture in your window feeder and it's generally emptied within a 24 hour period by your backyard birds. But recently your neighborhood got hit by a heat wave generating temperatures in excess of 90 degrees plus and suddenly no birds. Birds can handle the heat in a number of ways including physiologically and behaviorally. Their body temperature is higher than ours about 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees centigrade. They've got a higher metabolic rate and they certainly have a very active lifestyle which means they must find ways to dissipate that heat. Having no sweat glands, they've evolved rapid respiration rates to cool their bodies, as well as have bare areas devoid of feathers on their skin to allow them to give off heat. They've also developed specific behaviors to deal with excessive heat, panting, puffing out their feathers, and bathing are among them. But the behaviors that affected your feeder have to do with reducing their activity levels during the hottest hours and being more active when the sun is lower and the air cooler. But that does not completely answer your question because you said that your seeds were barely disturbed during that hot spell. So that leaves one more behavior to react to very hot temperatures, seeking shade. What your birds likely did during that heat wave was to retreat to the coolness of the forest, putting as much vegetation between them and the sun as possible. And by staying relatively inactive, they didn't require the energy provided by your seed nearly as much. Here in Quebec, a common ravens are considered to be northern birds because they prefer to live and breed further north of us. But according to researchers, the ravens are actually comfortable living just about anywhere. So what's the problem? Why are we not seeing more of them in our area? So it turns out that their cousins, the crows, are real jerks. They don't like ravens, so they harass them continuously. They raid their nest and steal their eggs, forcing ravens to move away, far away actually from crows. 
And even though one crow is a no match for a raven, when you get a big group of crows, it can mean murder. So if you have a lot of crows in your area, you probably won't see a single raven. A Polish research firm that was tracking white storks was shocked to receive a phone bill for $2,700. They had been using a tracker equipped with a SIM card to track white storks' 7,000 mile round trip from Poland to Africa and back. When Katik the stork arrived in Sudan, all of a sudden it stopped transmitting, so the researchers assumed that the bird had died. But two weeks later, the tracker started transmitting again and shortly afterwards the researchers received that outrageous bill. It turns out that someone found the tracker, removed the SIM card, put it in their phone and started making all sorts of phone calls. The phone company is not giving researchers any slack, so they have to pay the bill. At the end of June, I was in Rhode Island and I was absolutely smitten with their history and the beauty of their coastline. So I was not at all surprised to learn that this month, Rhode Island was the first state to sue oil companies for their impact on the environment and the effects of climate change. With over 400 miles of coastline, Rhode Island is at great risk because of rising ocean levels and severe weather. Even though Rhode Island was the first state to sue the oil companies, there are a number of counties and cities that are attempting to do exactly the same thing. Of course, all the oil companies are denying everything and they're doing their best to push all the cases to federal court where they stand a better chance of being dismissed. This tactic has been used before, but Rhode Island is urging all the states to stand up and make a change because of the White House full of climate change deniers, none of the states will ever receive any help from the federal government.